Hey everyone, Leanne Pilkington here for the latest Courageous Conversation and we have got my very good friend, Caroline Balderson, back for a second time. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good to be back. Very, very good. Very good. Thanks for coming back. Now, the reason I want to talk to you again is because I know you are launching a new training kind of program is that what it's called like what what is it tell me what you're doing yeah that's a great question what on okay, earth what is on it? earth are you doing <laughs> uh so i've created a a i guess it's a combination blended learning program the best way for me to put it and it's a 12 month access to a platform which has a combination of live interactive mentor sessions it's got live interactive master classes it has some pre-recorded courses yeah. uh, i'm going to have you know agent interviews there's a whole lot of insight video clips so it's quite a combination of different learning styles but it is all online and yeah. that is the major difference and it's for 12 months it's not just a quick yeah one minute you know a, a webinar and then that's it so it's like a monthly subscription model yeah look you can pay up front and yeah. save a heap of cash if you do that or yeah. you can absolutely pay month by month which makes it super affordable which was yeah. one of my motivators important. to be honest yeah. it's important mm. now i've got to ask you last time we caught up we had a conversation yes. around you changing direction because you were trying to build a whole online thing and then said no i'm not going to do that and you had all of this I, I, it seemed like it was a really hard decision for you. Like you had a lot to come to terms with. Would that yes. be fair? Very fair. Yeah. Yes, very fair. And and I love it because you're like, hang on, last time we spoke, you weren't going to do this. <laughs> I love that. And there you are. <laughs> I know. Well, y- yes, and I think what, what I've created now is quite different uh, to what I was thinking about creating back then. Yep. And that was all very much recorded, just membership based where you just um, access a whole bunch of stuff and just do it at your own pace at and dig around. And, yep. and it's not that. This is quite different. And it, it, I guess it came about because when I put the brakes on that mm-hmm. and the reasons I put the brakes on it are still valid today and yep. they still, it's the same reasons that I put the brakes on back then was that it was an enormous task and and at the time I was doing it for the wrong reasons, feeling that I was just comparing myself. Comparing to, yourself to everybody else because everyone's got um, those online, yeah, subscriptions, yeah. memberships, yeah. Yeah, and I was very much in that space of thinking, I have to do this, I should be doing you know, all those words yeah, that we absolutely. hear a lot about. Oh, I hate being shoulded, yeah. <laughs> I know, I think you said that actually I did. at the wire conference. I did, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's such a important thing to recognize when that's how you're talking to yourself and so all of that just felt really horrible it felt horrible I didn't like uh, just where my brain was going and all of that so so putting the brakes on that was fantastic it just freed me up and it just let me relax into doing what I do really naturally and easily which was a lot of the one-on-one coaching and doing small group sessions and speaking at conferences and things like that which is great what I found, though, is a few things happened, I guess. I, and now I'm talking out loud. It's actually becoming clearer how this yeah. all and how I ended up here. But yeah. um, what happened was I, I found that when I was having my one-on-one sessions with agents, mm-hmm. a lot of what I was coaching them on, mm-hmm. I would say maybe 70%, maybe a little more, 75%. Yeah. Was the same. Was the same. Yeah. It was a lot. A lot of it was the same. And whilst that doesn't bother me, yeah. it made me start to think and go, "Hang on," because the let's face it, one-on-one coaching is the top of the tree in terms of when you invest in your development yeah. and learning. That's the most expensive thing you can do because you're yeah. getting a coach all to yourself for that time. And time for coaches equals money, right? That's right. that's the problem. Yeah. So it got me thinking, I'm like, okay, I think there's something I can do here. So I actually, in 20, when would that have been then? Probably early 2019, I decided yeah. to, w- would that be right, Leanne, based yeah, on that live so. podcast? Yeah, 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 I reckon. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think it might be. I decided to package up um two masterclasses because that's where most of my coaching focus was going, which was all around the whole prospecting piece and Mm -hmm. building opportunities. And then the second most popular 
uh, topic, for want of a better word, or challenge for a lot of my clients was, yeah, how do I win more business in at, mm-hmm. at the listing meeting? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to package up some masterclasses. So I created uh, the Bold Listing Masterclass and the Bold Prospecting Masterclass. And they're three two-hour sessions. They were live when I first created them and then COVID hit. And it meant that what I was doing, it was small groups. So I was having anywhere from 10 to 15 agents in the Masterclass series, which is a really nice number. I really loved it. Yeah. And I was being able to use that six hours of my time over the Masterclass and everyone could share the cost in it in a way. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So it became a lot more accessible and a lot more affordable, which was really, really important. Yeah. And they were great. And what I loved was all the interaction between the agents as well. And And I think it's great for agents to know that they're not alone. I mean, you and I know um, that everybody has the same challenges and fancy trying to um, get more business and win more business, like prospecting. And there are no silver bullets, people. There are no silver bullets. You have to do the work. That's exactly Um, right. So, yeah, I would imagine that it would be helpful for agents to know that they're not alone. You've really hit on something very important there. I I really saw the camaraderie Mm. between the agents and they're from different brands and I even have had uh, one time two competitors in the same marketplace yet they were and I wondered how that would go to be honest I'm like oh how's that gonna go but they were great they were open they were giving they contributed and one thought or insight or perspective sparked another yeah which then created more thinking for me as well so it created a very different I guess, um, experience. Mm -hmm. And also I I found it became quite valuable for for everybody in the group to Mm -hmm. to have all these different angles, not just my perspective as a coach or the agent, the one-on-one thing. So that dynamic, I'm like, oh, I really love this. So I did that. They were popular. The feedback was great. And I I just enjoyed the, uh, the ability to help like more people in the one bit of time I've got because the biggest issue I have is I'm always full these days, which I'm very thankful for. And yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's totally amazing. Mm. But it's horrible when I get inquiries. And you every week help. I'm getting inquiries and I'm like, I can't help you. Yeah. And that, and I mean that really genuinely. I'm not just yeah. saying that as some sales pitch. Like I really feel, and so what I found I was doing, which is what led me to that where I had that breaking point a bit back in the October um I found I find myself saying yes even though yeah, I do. coach everybody not to do that yeah um and so I've yes. got spare time between three and four a.m on a Friday can you make that work yeah <laughs> well it's a bit like that isn't it I know. yeah I know. yeah because I, I just don't want to let people down and yeah. when people are hurting and I can hear I can hear the frustration yeah. or the disappointment or how things are going really wrong I actually really just want to help them so all of this was going on I I put together these masterclass series and I thought I was speaking to uh, another coach not a real estate coach and they're like Caroline why wouldn't you kind of package that up and maybe do it so no matter where the agents are they can do it like do it live but online I'm like oh maybe I don't know if people are like that and then what happens COVID COVID (laughs) and so I had to move it online yeah. And and I've worked out how to make an online group experience really interactive. You know, we yeah. can use the breakout rooms and I've, I've made yeah. it as close to being in a small training room as possible. Yeah. And everyone loved it. And, yeah. and the advantage is too, I can record it. They can purchase the recordings. So there's so many advantages and they're not wasting time traveling. And if they're interstate, they can actually. So all of that happened kind of naturally. Yeah. And then the COVID, there's silver linings for everything, right? I know, really. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Once, yep. I think for most people now, looking back, most people I'm talking to, especially in this industry, are feeling that they've really evolved and it's helped them in many ways. So you've got to love that. Yeah, for sure. And so from that, Leanne, what happened was then uh, that same coach that I was talking to said, why don't you package it up, sort of thing? Uh, She said, what else could you do to add value here? And I said, oh, God, so much because the masterclasses are phenomenal and they go very deep on the one uh, topic. I said, but there's so much more that I can't put in because the courses go for too long and all this sort of stuff. So then 
it just kind of, I just thought, you know what, I could easily just add some insight videos that go with them. I could easily add a few little things in. And then before I know it, I'm speaking to my digital person who does my website and my marketing and everything. And she's like, you just need an LMS where you can plug this in and then people can just access it. And so it just kind of organically went to that place. And then I decided, you know, I want this to be a 12-month pathway I, I, I would love an agent to go everything I need I can get from and no I was called bold 365 as you know so yep. 365 days of yep. everything you need and and I've added a whole bunch of stuff in so there are going to be twice a month you know mentor sessions where they can jump on and ask me anything and like if there's only five people show up well you've almost got like a one-on-one coaching session yeah so right. just stacking all these things in yeah and not only available, accessible, it's now super duper affordable compared mm. to what one-on-one coaching. So how how expensive is it? Or how okay, what's the investment? Yeah. That's better well, language, you, isn't it? it? Yeah, that is great language. Thank Sales you. language there. So yeah, well the investment monthly, if you do it monthly, it's two hundred and ninety seven bucks a month. Wow, that's yeah, that's really good value, isn't it? Well, absolutely. When you look at my one-on-one coaching is 1250 bucks a month for two sessions, for two hours, you get so much more in this. It's incredible. Yeah. And, and if you pay up front, you actually save 500 and something dollars and you get it for less than three grand for a whole year of coaching yeah. and training and mentoring. And, and I'm going to be adding lots of stuff to it. Over yeah, the year I can imagine. Well. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine you would. It sounds yeah. really, really exciting. And you um, light up when you talk about it which oh, um, just cool. tells me everything I need to know, right? It's, um, yeah. it's I'm excited for you. Hopefully. Thank you. Yeah. Me too. I, I'm yeah. really excited. Um, so yeah, just, let's just talk about COVID for a second. When COVID hit, because obviously a lot of what you were doing is speaking, you know, whether it's keynotes or small training or one-on-one yeah. coaching. So when COVID hit, how did you, how did you cope with that? Huh. Uh, the first week was a lot of like, oh, okay, oh my well, God. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does this actually mean? I wasn't sure. Yeah. And then I, I had, then the calls started coming and all my training bookings just Dried evaporated up. out of my yeah. calendar. Yeah. And I'm usually booked for training probably two quarters in advance. Yeah. Just gone. I'm like, okay. And I thought, it's okay. I've still got all my coaching clients. And then I thought, well, I wonder how this is going to impact them. Mm. And then I started getting a few calls and mainly from the principals of when I was, you know, working with coaching some officers. So the principals responded differently than just the individual agents that I worked with. And so I had a a few principals calling going, listen, we're getting advice from the top if they're in franchise groups, et cetera, that we have to tighten the reins, you know. And I'm like, of course, this will be the first thing. So, yeah, by April I probably like 60% of my revenue was just gone. Yeah, right. And and I'm like, that's okay. It's cool. And so I I still did what I could and didn't charge people. Like if they were just like, we're just not sure. I'm like, look, let me just come in and I'll, work, I'll keep working with you. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, within a month or so, some of those are like, oh, everything's actually okay. So okay. just re-engage. Yeah. And by June... Um, I was all systems go again and then I was doing a whole bunch of those free little webinars I did one for you guys yeah. and I just started doing complimentary uh, sessions just to help people through it yeah which actually helped me a lot as well that I yeah could well I avoiding. felt um, yeah as I said um, at the wire conference last week I felt really useful um, during mm. COVID because I I could I could be really helpful and that gave yeah. me a focus, um, and it's really important to feel like you're adding value and have a focus for you, you know, for how you're spending your time, oh, rather than sure. spiraling down into the drama and the negativity and the, you know. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm right with you on that, Leanne. Yeah. And it's that whole thing of, you know, being able to do something that you can control that matters and that you can control, and that's where I had to turn my attention to. Yeah, because I could, there's so much I couldn't control. Us. So I, I realised pretty quickly that that would be a disaster, even though the, the thought of, you know, having, oh, this would be nice for a few months and I'll just chill out because, you know, we've all, we all work mostly pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, that was just never going to work for me. No, no. I just, that would be terrible. So, yeah, just, yeah, useful and purposeful. That's a really good word. Yeah. And being able to contribute back. Yeah, that really absolutely. helped. 
Mm. Yeah, I remember going over because it was four days over Easter and I thought, wow, imagine four days. I'm going to have so much time. <laughs> and so I borrowed some books from the family because I love to read. And, of course, they're still sitting up in my study. and They haven't been opened because I haven't had any time. Um, so, yeah, the way, yeah, yeah, what I thought was going to happen so didn't happen for me. And it sounds like mm. you were as busy as I was. Yeah, I was because I think if it sounds like if I'm understanding it correctly, our response to it was, okay, if I can't do that, what can I do? What can I do? Yeah. What do my people need? How can I help? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was exactly the same as me. Um, yeah, so, I felt good cool being able to do that. Yeah, so do I. Absolutely. Yeah, it's mm. sort of part of who we are, right? Yeah. Um, so if people, um, so can people join your program at any time? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. That was the other thing. I wanted just to make a jump on your 365 days start starts. Starts now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, just it's on the website. So beingbold.com.au, there's a tab at the top. It says Bold365. It explains it all. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions for anybody. It's hopefully all pretty self-explanatory. And then the minute you, you join, it's on and you start. And it's, yeah. you'll be in the next mentor session and you can, I've got two courses that you just jump in straight away and do yeah. self-pace, which is bold thinking yeah. and bold planning. So they're there so you can get all of that done. And then the live masterclasses are prospecting, bold listing, bold selling and bold communicating. They're my two new ones, which are yeah. awesome. And communicating okay. a lot of the uh, behavioural profiling stuff that I'm so in love oh, with. Oh, wow, okay. And so I'm tailoring that into this industry about, you know. And so what, what profiling tool do you use? DISC. I use extended okay. DISC. Yep. Yep, okay. And, what's uh, your yeah, DISC gonna, profile? What's mine? Mm. <laughs> uh, well, we all have, most of us, 98% of the population have two captain energy types or behavioural types and mine are D for dominant, go figure, and I for influencer. So You're not going to believe what mine is. <laughs> well, so, I would say you're D. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a DI as well. You're the I as well? I wasn't sure yeah. if you'd be DI or DC because you're extremely organised, extremely ah. efficient. Well, you no. come across that way. Oh, that's, so. Yeah, that's all just a facade. You tap into that, you see. So Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'll go figure. How funny. Yeah. That's yeah. why we get on. That's right. Yeah, PLU, people like us. Yeah. Yeah, we speak similar language. We do, yeah. And that's what that's all about, the bold communicating. How do you speak similar language but still be you? And it's so important. It's one thing that I've always, it's always frustrated me with a lot of salespeople. Um, they don't seem to be able to tailor the way that they communicate to the way somebody wants to hear from them. So for someone like me, I need fast communication. I need dot points. I don't need the background story. Um, um, yeah. give me graphs so that I can picture it really quickly. Uh, yeah. Whereas other sure people, visual. Yeah, yeah, other people really like the story. Jackie Jones, for example, she yeah. tells me the whole story and I've gotten used to letting her tell yeah. me at least, you know, more of the story than I used to let her. Um, <laughs> so it's really important to understand how somebody wants to be communicated with, right? It is vital. And that's the real, and to me, that's like the missing link and uh, what I weave into so much of my coaching and training work, I'm always trying to layer that in no matter what the topic is. Yeah. And um, and it, it, it's monumental the difference it makes. I've got so much evidence from people I've worked with who've actually taken the time to get good at it. Yeah. They go, it's like it's blown up their world, even their family relationships, their friends, everything. It's like removing a lot of misunderstandings and misjudgments. It's so incredibly powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I just love plugging it into the industry, you know, around all of those fundamental pieces yeah. that we need. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because everybody, um, most people want to do the right thing. But where we fall apart is that everybody's idea of the right thing is um, is actually a bit different. <laughs> and so, you know, what I think is the right thing, you might not think is the right thing. And that's, you know, there can be um, sort of a clash in the middle. So, Completely. yeah. Mm. And I became aware a long time ago that I my belief is the reason we are like that is that I don't know about you, but I was taught this as, as a young kid, I guess from my mum, which is treat others as mm -hmm. you'd like to be form. treated. You'd like to be treated. So we're yeah. taught that. I'm going to treat you how I want to be treated. Yeah. But you might not want to be treated how I want to be no. treated. And that's yeah. the problem. And we've all grown up with it. Yeah, so it's so just true. 
flipping the lens on that and saying, how about we treat others as they want to be treated and try and enter their world and speak their language. So and how that, do you work out how to do that? How do you work out how somebody wants to be treated? And Well, that's what the um, the bold communication course is all about, bold communicating, because yeah. it's it's helping people identify that. And there, there are only four major behavioural styles, so it's not that, it's not complex. that complicated. And, you know, at a, at a broad level, I'm helping agents just to pick up, pick up on the cues, both verbal cues, physical cues, even it's, it comes down to when they receive emails and messages and how like you can pick up on who you might be dealing with and how they want to be um, communicated with. Yeah. And so I, I teach them how to see the cues. And there's also one of the most important parts of it is the whole decision-making criteria, how the different energy types make their decisions. And you and I, are fast decision makers. Well, we yes, we are. Yeah. Are and we then that, right? Uh, yes. Well, you're a faster decision maker than me, my friend, let me tell you, after everything that goes on in your world. Um, <laughs> I know. And so I've just told you about us selling our house out of nowhere. I mean, God. Well, yeah. Talk me through that decision making process for you. Well, it's really fascinating, actually, being a coach and talking to my clients about this because I'm using this to help them understand where the opportunities are right now. We right. had a bit of a two to three year plan. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, thinking we wanted to build up, you know, a certain amount of equity in the property and all that sort of stuff. And then a property across the road came to market maybe, I don't know, four weeks ago, five, six weeks ago now, and the yeah. auction was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And when I saw what they were quoting, I'm like, oh, that's similar to what I think ours would be worth. And yeah. the auction happened, sold for like 500 grand more than what they would think it was going to get. And then the agent knows me and I was at the auction. She's like... Have you got any plans, Caroline? I'm like, maybe, given that. Yeah. And then, yeah, we just did it super quickly just to um, the underbids were desperate. And I said, look, we're not ready to sell, <laughs> but if they're there and we we got an extra 250 of them, what even that one got? So it just was very quick, very spur of the moment and just bringing plans forward. And, and I've shared this with a lot of my clients to say, don't just accept don't just when you're speaking to your pipeline and they're saying, yeah. oh, we're not ready yet. What if they could? Like if this happened, what would that then mean? And that has yeah. to be the question, that whole if-then equation is a really mm -hmm. good approach. And and I've had clients who've actually brought people to market because of that. Yeah. I'm like don't just accept it, challenge it and test it. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, particularly the way the market is now in, um, in most areas, um, it mm -hmm. certainly is definitely worthwhile making those phone calls to people around <laughs> properties to just say you know this is what's going on what you know where are you up to yeah, yeah. what could this mean for you I mean yeah. how how could this change your plans I mean yeah. all those wonderful opening questions are, rather than telling them oh the market's yeah. great you know ask those questions and get them thinking that's yeah that's what worked for us <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well you and I could chat all night um we've done it before yeah. um Yarn so <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to, to check in. I can't wait to hear how um, Bold365 goes. I'm sure it's going to be Thank super you. popular. Um, oh, I hope so. Yeah. Let's see. I'm giving it a crack, Leanne. You know, Good you on you. That's, what it's, all, that's what, what it's all about. Say yes. Have a crack. All right, my friend, I yep. will speak to you that's again it. very, very soon. You're wonderful. Thanks for the follow-up on this. I'll keep you posted. No worries. Bye. Okay. Bye.